This is part four of the material from chapter 10 for general biology one. This is material on cell division. So we've gotten through the process of the cell cycle and uh, mitosis. And one of the things that we need to realize is that uh, this process cell division does not occur continually and it is not a random process. It is a very highly controlled process. And the control system is a very complex, is, is a very complex set of interactions. So the cell cycle is regulated by complex interactions of both external and internal factors. And these form checkpoints in the cell cycle. And the major checkpoints that we have in the cell cycle are between G1 and S, between G2 and M, and between the M stage and G1. Now these checkpoints are controlled by complex sets of proteins. So notice that's not saying it's controlled by a protein, but it's controlled by multiple proteins that are interacting. They're interacting with each other and they're interacting with other factors inside the cell and outside the cell. And so these checkpoints will ensure that conditions are right for cell division, will ensure that cell division is needed, <clears throat> will um, make sure the DNA has been copied correctly during the S substage, and that the sister chromatids have separated during anaphase. Now here's uh, our diagram of the cell cycle where you have M, G1, S, and G2. And this is showing uh, just one component of the uh, control system here, the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase, and the idea of how this is going to work. So cyclin gets its name because its concentration increases and decreases in, at various points in the uh, cell cycle. This what's called cyclin dependent kinase is a material that as the name implies depends on the concentration of cyclin and uh, a kinase is a material that turns on and turns off other proteins, activates and inactivates other proteins. Okay, so let's look at this other part and come back to this diagram. So we have cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase are one of the major sets of proteins acting as checkpoints in the cell cycle. Cyclin, this is a family of regulatory proteins, not just a single regulatory protein, but an entire family of regulatory proteins that will change concentration during the cell cycle that's the name, cyclin, and it will bond with what's called cyclin-dependent kinase to activate that cyclin-dependent kinase. Okay, now the cyclin-dependent kinase. Let's look at that. Kinase is a broad general term for an enzyme that is a protein that activates or inactivates other proteins by means of phosphorylation. Remember what phosphorylation is, it's tacking that phosphate group on there. And uh, the cyclin dependent kinase, as the name implies, it can function as a kinase only when it's bonded to cyclin. Okay, so this is the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase complex. And this stimulates cell division by activating proteins that promote cell division and inactivating the uh, proteins that, inhib that inhibit cell division. So cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase are internal factors that control events during the cell cycle. So here's their diagram again and try to get try to get an idea of what's going on. So we've got this material called cyclin. Cyclin increases and decreases its concentration during the cell cycle. So notice right here, after mitosis, the cyclin is broken down. 
Now we don't have cyclin present until about the end of that G1 stage. Okay, and then cyclin will build up in the cell and the cyclin bonds with cyclin dependent kinase. So cyclin dependent kinase is always present but it can only act as a kinase that is to switch on and switch off these other proteins it can only act as a kinase when it's bonded with the cyclin and so that means only when the cyclin's present can this stuff do its job so notice the one, one reason for looking at this is just the idea of looking at the degree of complexity that we have in this uh, control system okay? Okay, let's look at some external factors. So cyclin, cyclin dependent kinase are internal factors controlling the cell cycle. Let's look at some external factors that affect the cell cycle. One that's kind of easy to imagine how it would work is the idea of crowding. So crowding, non-crowding of cells. This is called contact inhibition. So that means if you have cells pushing against one another that should serve as a sig signal that <clears throat> there are enough cells and we don't need any more cell division right now. If you get a cut or some kind of damage to this tissue and it separates contact between the cells, then that would be a signal that, uh, wait a minute, something's wrong. I don't, there's not somebody else right out here. We need to divide and produce a few more cells. So normal cells will respond to contact inhibition. Cancerous cells generally do not respond to contact inhibition. Uh, environmental conditions like temperature, pH, nutrition, those influence uh, cell, the cell cycle. Growth factors. Growth factors are extracellular substances produced by other cells that stimulate cell division. So in other words, extracellular, this is from outside the cell that's being affected. Okay. Now one example of that is that uh, the uh, epidermal cells, cells of the skin, the dermis and uh, those producing the epidermis, uh, these cells respond to what are called platelet-derived growth factors. So look at this. Platelets are not even entire cells. Platelets are cell fragments that are found in the bloodstream. Their main job is to clot the blood. Okay, but these fragments, these cell fragments found in the blood that uh, we normally think of as just being there to clot the blood, they give off chemical agents that are going to be transmitted over here to the epidermis and affect cell division in the epidermis. And then we also see that there are some hormones that can stimulate cell division and function as growth factors. Okay, let's look at the generalities of mitosis versus meiosis. So, mitosis. Mitosis is a form of cell division involved in growth and repair of an organism. Mitosis produces the somatic cells. Remember, the somatic cells are the body cells. It's all the cells other than the egg cells and the sperm cells. The form of cell division, the mitosis is a form of cell division that's associated with asexual reproduction or cloning. Now, as a whole organism, we don't have asexual reproduction in ourselves. You can't chop off a little finger and stick it in a pot of soil and grow a new copy of yourself. But where we do have asexual reproduction is on a cellular level. So, for example, with your skin, you're constantly losing skin cells. Those are being replaced from beneath by making exact copies of the existing cells. So we, we don't have asexual reproduction as a whole organism, but we do have it on a cellular basis. Okay, mitosis also uh, has no changes in chromosome number. So if we're talking about a human cell, you start out with 46 chromosomes in the cell, goes through mitosis, you have two new cells, each with 46 chromosomes. No change in the, in the number of chromosomes. 
There's also no change in genetic information. So the daughter cells are exact copies of the mother cell and exact copies of each other. Mitosis involves one division and it produces two new cells. And with mitosis, we're going to start out with a diploid cell, 2N, and we're going to end up with new diploid cells, that is 2N. Now, in some organisms, certainly not in animals, but in some of the fungi, some of the uh, algae, we'll see this, um, we'll see haploid cells going through mitosis and producing new haploid cells. Okay, process of meiosis. This is a form of cell division that's involved in sexual reproduction. It produces gametes, it reduces chromosome number by one half, and the daughter cells are genetically different from the mother cell and from each other. Now, at the beginning of all this, um, I had mentioned that you need to pay specific attention to the material that is in red. This page should have been red. I must have overlooked it when I was changing the color on these. Okay, meiosis involves two divisions. The first division reduces chromosome number by one half. The second division separates the sister chromatids. It produces four new daughter cells and we start with a cell that is diploid. We end up with cells that are haploid. So here's a couple of sketches to show the basic idea. Here's mitosis and we start with this cell and in this particular cell we've got two chromosomes. If this was human there would be 46. If it's a corn plant there would be 20. But this cell is diploid. We have homologous pairs of chromosomes in the cell. During the process of mitosis, the sister chromatids are pulled apart, and here's one sister chromatid, here's the other sister chromatid. From the other chromosome, here's the sister chromatid, there's the other sister chromatid. So, these cells are diploid. They are diploid because they have homologous chromosomes. One chromosome that came from dad, one that came from mom. Double-stranded versus single-stranded has nothing to do with diploid or haploid. Mitosis is going to be diploid at every stage all the way through the process. Meiosis, which of course is needed for sexual reproduction, has two divisions and what we're going to see is we're going to start out with a cell that is diploid. We have homologous chromosomes that are going to pair together. And during the first division, these homologs are going to separate from each other. And they'll go into separate cells. So we now have half as many chromosomes in the cell as what we started with. If this was human, we would have started with 23 homologous pair or 46 chromosomes and each of these new cells would have one chromosome from each homologous pair for a total of 23, 23 chromosomes in that cell, 23 chromosomes in that cell. So the first division of meiosis reduces chromosome number by one half. The second division is going to change this from double-stranded chromosomes to single-stranded chromosomes. We're going to separate the sister chromatids. And down here at the bottom, um, I think the word chromatids didn't make it on the screen. So, second division separates sister, and it should say chromatids. Okay, so this gives us a total of four cells, and these new cells are haploid. Okay, and then with the next uh, part in the series, we'll start in with process of meiosis and how that works.